Hello, uh, I'm Hua Shao from the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering of um, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. So first of all, thank the organizers for inviting me to give a uh, keynote speech in the sixth international conference on chemical and polymer engineering. Unfortunately, this uh, uh, conference cannot be held on site. I thank the organizers hard work. So um, now, we can have a virtual meeting. So um, uh, we have an opportunity to share the uh, research in my group. So the topic of my presentation today is the electrocatalysis for the carbon dioxide chemical reduction reaction. So here's the uh, outline of my talk. So first I will give a brief introduction to the carbon dioxide reduction and then I will uh, introduce, uh, select uh, several uh, works that uh, in my uh, group. First uh, is using in situ infrared spectroscopy uh, technique to study the carbon dioxide reduction on copper uh, thin film. Uh, second work is the bleeding gold nanowires uh, as a catalyst for the carbon dioxide reduction. Third is the plating gold kosher nanoparticles for carbon dioxide uh, reduction. And the last is the carbon based single item materials for carbon dioxide reduction. So we know that uh, the uh, concentration of carbon dioxide in atmosphere has increased significantly since the Second World War. The Rising of the carbon dioxide concentration mainly comes from the consumption of fossil fuels, right? Because the uh, those fossil fuels contain uh, carbon. Okay. So if you look at this chart, right, the increase of carbon dioxide, the more fraction in atmosphere increased linearly since 1985, and actually you can predict. Okay, follow this linear relationship, you can predict the carbon dioxide uh, concentration in, uh, in the near future. Uh, actually, in 2019, the concentration is about uh, 415 ppm. That's the record high level in the atmosphere. The problem of uh, the carbon dioxide concentration increase Right, mainly causes the uh, the global warming because carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gases, and okay? so once the temperature rises and the sea level also uh, rises, okay, so that will create a uh, severe you know, weather uh, change. Okay, and that's uh, we don't want to, to see. So when there's any method okay, to control the carbon dioxide uh, emission, right? of course, you want to see, uh, right? so reduce the consumption of fossil fuels by using more renewable energy, such as a solar cell, uh, wind power. Right? But we know that uh, those uh, renewable energy uh, intermittent. So you need uh, a energy storage device to store the electricity and then use them when needed. Okay. But the energy storage devices are not there yet. Okay. So even the, talking about the battery due to this, uh, you know, the high cost and the low uh, energy density. Okay. So uh, they are not mature yet for the energy, uh, the green, you know, the, the uh, large energy storage device. Or you can capture the carbon dioxide and uh, uh, bury it underground. Okay, so there's one thing that uh, uh, you can do. And the third way is that uh, you can convert the carbon dioxide into uh, something else, useful chemicals. For example, at high temperature, high pressure, you convert carbon dioxide into methanol, right? So those are the you know, the uh, different uh, ways that we can 
you know, minimize the impact of carbon dioxide emission. So what the, the chemistry can do? Actually, if we can use a renewable electricity, we can convert the carbon dioxide into small organic fuels, like uh, methane, ethylene, methanol, formic acid, carbon monoxide. Okay. So the first example of the chemical reduction of carbon dioxide actually uh, a long time ago in 19th centuries. Found that the carbon dioxide was reduced to formic acid using a, a zinc electrode. Okay. And in the 1980s, Hori okay, uh, found that the copper was a good catalyst for carbon dioxide reduction to form methane and ethane as the main products. But uh, since then, uh, the research uh, has been uh, not very active because of the, the selectivity problem and also the uh, uh, reaction rate, yeah, very limited reaction rate, very low reaction rate. So the reaction activity actually were quite low. But recent years, uh, this topic resurfaced again due to the feasibility of using renewable energy. Uh, otherwise, it is difficult to store. Okay. So the advantage of using uh, your chemistry uh, to do the CO2 conversion is that this process can be achieved at the end of temperature and the pressure. So you do not need to go to very high temperature or, or pressure. And this is a carbon neutral fuel, uh, uh, carbon neutral process. Because uh, if we were using the renewable energy, okay, from the wind or solar uh, power, we can uh, create a carbon neutral process. Okay. And then we can also provide a means of storing natural resources for future uh, usage. So it's easy to see, but uh, very difficult to achieve. As a hurry, uh, summarize the um, different kind of uh, electric catalysis for the carbon dioxide reduction. Uh, this table actually um, was published in 1994. Uh, you can see that uh, different metal surface actually uh, can generate different products. Okay, so the first uh, category is the uh, main top, the main, main product is a formate or formic acid, okay? including lead, mercury. So you can see that the uh, majority of the product is uh, formic acid. Um, for gold, silver, zinc, palladium, those are the main product are the uh, carbon monoxide. Okay. And uh, for platinum, nickel, iron, the main product is actually hydrogen, so that means um, the hydrogen evolution is uh, much easier on this surface, okay, instead of carbon dioxide reduction. And you can see that uh, copper is very special. It's the only uh, uh, surface that it can generate a large amount of methane and ethane, okay. So uh, the copper is actually has been intensively studied in the past to uh, make, you know, understand why copper is so special, okay? So we also try to do um, something to understand this uh, carbon dioxide reduction process on a copper surface. So we utilize a surface enhanced infrared absorption spectroscopy or called a surface, okay? So the mechanism of CERUS is very similar to CERUS, CERUS enhanced uh, Rama spectroscopy. Okay. Also, if you want to, to understand the reaction mechanism, um, the first thing you want to, uh, to know is the reaction intermediates in the process. And since this uh, uh, reaction is uh, you know, not uh, uh, very uh, fast and also the, uh, uh, the reaction intermediates, okay, the desorption probably very weak. So we needed to am amplify the signal of this reaction intermediates on metal surface. We know that uh, uh, infrared has a big problem due to the water absorption. Yeah, so a lot of uh, signal will be absorbed by the aqueous electrolyte. 
So in order to minimize the effect on the water, uh, a typical requirement in the chemistry is using the uh, external reflection. Okay, so basically, if you have a refractive element, for example, silicon or zinc cyanide, and then the working electrode is pressed on that uh, you know the element, okay, forming a very thin um, liquid layer, typically the 10 micron meter. Okay, so so the when the infrared beam uh, pass through this uh, electrolyte light and reflect on the working electrode, and then will be can be corrected by the detector. So the infrared uh, can only pass this way thin layer. So the, the impact of the water will be minimized. But uh, uh, still, the the significant amount of water to, to absorb on the uh, infrared synchron. So usually, the synchron you know the spectrum is quite the uh, ugly and uh, the if the uh, signal of the reaction in the media is weak, we can't uh, detect, can see this kind of uh, signal on the infrared spectrum. So we use this uh, surface enhanced infrared. There are two advantages. One is that um, there will be not too much of water absorption. Second, the signal of the reaction in the media on the metal surface will be uh, amplified. Okay? So what we do is that uh, we use uh, Reflective into a uh, reflective element uh, to place silicon, and then on the silicon surface, we deposit a thin metal film, for example, platinum, gold, with the working electrode. So when the infrared is reflected uh, at the interface of this uh, um, um, silicon and the liquid, uh, so it generates a emulsion wave, it will be totally reflected. Okay, so only this emulsion in a way will penetrate through the metal and also the, the electrolyte. So it's typically like um, uh, less than 100 nanometer, so it's very, very thin. So the effect of the water on the infrared, infrared the single is very small. Okay, another thing is that uh, when you deposit the same film on this uh, surface, it generates uh, nanoparticles, that film is rubbed, okay, and the signal can be amplified. So in order, so when we uh, study the um, copper thin film, we first uh, deposit a gold thin film on silicon because uh, if we directly deposit copper, it would be very difficult. Okay, so we de developed a method to develop uh, the gold on silicon prisma first. Okay, using this uh, hydrogen fluoride to etch the silicon surface, and the gold can be reduced on the surface. Okay, you can see the shining surface on the silicon, right? So after you make this gold symbol, you can categorize using your chemical method. So it's a typical polycrystalline gold. So after that, we deposit a copper layer. And so uh, copper layer, we can deposit using the chemical method to deposit, right? So first uh, we need to determine, you know, to determine one layer of copper, how much, how many charges are needed, okay? So we're using the copper under potential deposition to figure out the copper you know, the charge needed to make a one molar layer of copper. Okay, so in this case, it's about 1.2 millicoulomb to you know, cover the whole surface, right? Then we're using chemical, uh, you did chemical method to keep the potential at the point two, three, four volt to deposit the copper. And then we can uh, measure the current, basically the, the charge passing through the deposition. Um, we can control the thickness of the copper. In this case, it's about 150 millimeter uh, layer, so it's about 20 nanometer of copper on gold thin film. Yeah, so this is a chemical cell that we developed for the kind of uh, investigation. Okay, so first so we want to see whether this gold has any impact on our measurement. Okay, so this is a, 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 a in situ FT, you know, FTR signal. Yeah, at a different uh, voltage. This is a uh, uh, carbon dioxide saturated 0.1 molar opposing uh, bicarbonate solution. Okay? And this is argon saturated uh, solution. You can see that uh, on gold same film, there's nothing, no single okay, in this uh, uh, real number range. So that means the gold has no impact on our uh, investigation. But it, <clears throat> and then we can you know, uh, do our in situ experiments we can uh, scan the uh, voltage from positive to negative okay, to 
initiate the uh, carbon dioxide reduction. The black curve is in the argon saturated uh, by carbon solution, and the red one is uh, with the carbon dioxide. Okay, so with the argon saturated uh, solution, we can see the the current density at uh, the same voltage is actually higher than the carbon dioxide saturated. So this is because that uh, during the carbon dioxide reduction, it generates some reaction in the minutes or the byproducts like a covered surface. So, so okay, so um, the, the current that is generated uh, from the chemical reaction is actually smaller in the argon saturated because in the argon saturated, the main reaction will be the hydrogen evolution. Okay, uh, and uh, we can also see that the copper just started to dissolve at the potential of five and point four volt. So you can we need to make sure that the voltage will be lower than 0.4 volt. So this is a, a FTR a spectrum um, during the carbon dioxide reduction on the gold, thing, uh, on the copper thing deal, okay? You put on the voltage from positive to negative, okay? You can see that uh, there's a negative band, this is the carbon dioxide in the liquid phase, okay, in the solution. You can see this is a negative, so that means this is a depletion of carbon dioxide, okay? And we also have this uh, very big negative band. This is a uh, uh, component uh, ions in the solution, okay? And this uh, 1394 band, this is uh, also the uh, uh, component in the solution. And this is a uh, soft on the, on, the, on the surface, okay? And, and this is confirmed that if you measure the, uh, the wave number of this uh, uh, person, Combinate uh, in the uh, uh, hydroxide solution, you can see this is exactly the same number. Okay, so those are not very important bands. Let's look at uh, some of the bands, but uh, you know, much weaker. Okay, so this is uh, about the 2008. So this band actually associated with uh, the absorption of carbon monoxide. Okay, and the very weak band about the 1700. So this band is associated with the carbon. Uh, oxygen double band in CHO. So this is actually relation in the media in generating the carbon monoxide. Uh, and another band is about 1600. So this is about the water uh, absorbed on the, on the surface. There's also some uh, two weak, very weak band around the 1400. If you convert these two bands, one is around this uh, uh, 1400 and the other is about uh, uh, 1370. Okay. So this has two bands. One is associated with uh, um, the absorption of OCO species. So it's uh, uh, two oxygen absorbed on the surface. And the other is the COH, okay? Only one carbon absorbed on the surface, okay? So OCO is, uh, will be the, um, the formic, uh, formic, and the COH will be the uh, reaction intermediates of forming this uh, CHO, okay? And the CO, okay? So this is very actually the spectrum is very uh, give you a very uh, uh, much information okay in this kind of uh, reaction okay so it, it can detect a lot of different reaction in the media okay so one thing that uh, we want to um, confirm is that uh, uh, using a background spectrum okay so without uh, carbon dioxide uh, solution no uh, gas in the solution. We can, we can still see this uh, band associated with the carbon monoxide, okay? So it's about uh, here, the band uh, 2070, and then there's another band, the broad band 2020. So it's, uh, this is uh, due to the absorption of carbon monoxide uh, with the uh, uh, bridge um, uh, mode, and this is the top mode, okay? So that's very interesting, right? Because uh, we don't purge CO, CO2, so that means there's no CO2 in the solution, but we still see this uh, generation of CO. So how does this CO be produced, okay? So we further using the oscilloscope, okay? Uh, using the carbon 13 in the electrolyte and still using, without any of CO2, we can see this is the same uh, peak riser, but with different position, okay? And uh, we definitely confirm this is uh, due to the CO, okay? Because of the shifting of the wave number uh, by using the oscilloscope. We further <coughs> did a, a faster scan experiment using a previous step instead of the previous scanning, okay? So from the 0.2 volt, there's no CO2 reduction, jump to minus 0.6 volt, so there's a, uh, 
or, or with the CO2 reduction, okay? So after the first uh, uh, spectrum, I guess it's three seconds, uh, uh, in the system of carbon dioxide purged of bicarbonate solution, all both the carbon are carbon 12, okay? We see this uh, carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide uh, um, reduction because of the consumption of the carbon dioxide, okay? And is the, the appearance of this uh, carbon monoxide, okay, in this position. So that means uh, the carbon dioxide reduction occurs immediately after you uh, reach this uh, negative potential. If you are uh, using this isotope, okay, you can see the carbon 13 in the bicarbonate and the carbon 12 in the carbon dioxide. So the, in the first uh, uh, three seconds, we all also see this uh, rising of the carbon uh, monoxide, but the position is different from this uh, previous uh, example. Okay, so much lower volume number. So that means the carbon monoxide coming from this uh, bicarbonate instead of carbon dioxide. And at the same time, you can see the carbon dioxide uh, single is also the volume number is different from this uh, um, 23, 43, okay? So it's coming from a lower number, so due to the uh, carbon monoxide from the carbon 13, right? So Based on this, this information, we can propose that uh, the uh, bicarbonate that uh, in the solution is actually a play a central role here. Is basically is uh, uh, immediate. Okay, so this uh, carbon monoxide first, uh, uh, you know, will react, you know, react with the hydroxide to form the bicarbonate, and the bicarbonate approach to the metal surface and decompose it uh, to form carbon uh, dioxide. Okay, so this. Uh, by company is actually the very important, you know, you know, try is basically the, is a bridge, okay, uh, for carbon dioxide move uh, closer to the solution. So next, uh, we're talking about uh, the uh, palladium-based catalyst for carbon dioxide reduction. And palladium is a uh, is a very um, popular metal, okay, like a palladium, um, like a platinum, okay. So it has been applied in many reactions. But in the carbon dioxide reduction, it found, found out it can produce a lot of different uh, products. And by engineering the structure and the surface, actually um, the selectivity of, of, the, of the products actually also can be tuned. Okay? For example, if you make a different uh, kind of nanoparticles okay, to create a string, so basically, if you want, uh, usually create a tensile string because the absorption of the carbon uh, dioxide to too um, to weak, you need to make it stronger. Okay, so you typically you generate a higher um, product efficiency for the carbon monoxide uh, product production. And uh, if you are using different facet, for example, one 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 zero zero or one one zero. You can see that is this uh, uh, the ratio rate and uh, product efficiency also different. Uh, or you can make an annoy, so the surface is actually uh, looped with different uh, foreign anim uh, elements. So you can see that uh, it also have a, also have a big impact on the uh, product efficiency, typically for the carbon monoxide. So our idea is that uh, we're using is uh, nanowires. Okay, to generate uh, a lot of green boundaries, so that means the defects. And once you have defects, then the, the, the absorption energy of the reactants and also the reaction intermediates will be different. Okay, so we synthesize the plating and wise. Okay, so simply just uh, using a sodium bihydride uh, to reduce the, the palladium um, uh, precursor, and you get a plating and wise. And uh, we further to make the alloy with gold, okay? Because gold is actually has a large uh, atomic radius than palladium. So when you uh, alloy with the palladium, then basically the metal constant of palladium will become larger. So it gives you a tensile, efficient tensile strength, okay? So you can use the method that can also make the palladium gold and wires, okay? So this is a palladium, pure palladium and wire is a palladium gold with different uh, atomic ratio. Yeah, one thing is interesting is that uh, we found that uh, the palladium is actually and the gold actually form phase segregation. So the surface is actually the palladium rich. So you have a palladium over layer on top of the gold. Okay. So, uh, and also you have seen there's a lot of uh, 
effects between boundaries on the wires. Okay. So interestingly, we can see that uh, if we compare the product efficiency of CO at different uh, potentials uh, with the plate nanoparticle, okay, so the plate nanoparticle is a black one, so you can see that the, the CO product efficiency productivity quite low, the highness is less than 70%, but for, even for the plate nanowire itself, the red one, you can see at high voltage, the uh, same voltage, in the productivity of CO is much higher than the plate nanoparticle. And with gold into it, we can see that uh, the activity are even higher. And uh, more interestingly, the over potential to have the CO2 reduction is actually shifted by 100 millivolt more positively. Okay, so very very uh, nice uh, catalyst than pure palladium. So we first did this XRD diffraction on um, Python uh, check. So you can see that uh, for the plate and the wire, the, the peak is uh, already slightly shifted to a low angle. So that means the plate has a, the wire has a larger less constant than pure plate and particle. And of course, if you uh, analyze with the gold, this, this peak is shifted even more. So that means that uh, the tensile strain uh, uh, the more tensile strain in the plate and gold and wires. So we need to understand why this uh, uh, the plating and why and the plating gold and why is actually had the higher CO activity uh, C activity. Okay, so we did the in situ FTL study, but this time is not a, a metal film, but instead we have this uh, real nanoparticle nanowires uh, electric catalyst, right? So we we actually uh, uh, deposited the gold and film first, and then coat the the uh, gold film, film with the catalyst. So now we can we using gold film as uh, to increase the uh, connectivity, right? So we can do the in-situ measurement. You can see that on the plate and the particle, we, uh, during the CO2 reduction, you can see these uh, two bands. So the one is about uh, uh, 2000, the other is lower, 1800. Okay? So it's related with the CO absorption. The high value number of one is due to the top absorption and the, the lower one due to the bridge and the triple right but this uh, top absorption is very weak okay and uh, if you use the plate and wise we can also see this uh, too big but uh, with the uh, uh, top one the slightly increases okay especially in the lower you know over potential you can see that uh, this is uh, the top one okay but uh, for the plate and particle didn't see anything okay? it has very low potential if you use the plate and gold then this uh, trend is uh, even more uh, profound, okay. So it will go potential. You can see that uh, the 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 top uh, CO is actually very clear, okay. So you can, if you uh, integrate uh, the intensity of the CO band and then using you know, the the top uh, sub the CO to the bridge of uh, bond the CO, the ratio you can see that uh, for the plating goes in the one at the same voltage, the uh, the linear or top of bundle CO has a much higher percentage. So that means on uh, the plate and golden nano wise, uh, the CO, a lot of CO bundle as a linear or a bridge bundle. So how does this affect uh, the selectivity? Okay, the productivity and selectivity. So actually so for the linear or the top of bundle CO, the bundle energy is much lower than the bridge or triple bundle uh, ones. Okay, so that means uh, once you produce the CO, so it's a linear bonded, it's easy to remove from the surface. Okay, so generate the CO, that's the final product. But for the others, actually, it's a very strongly absorbed on the surface, so basically the poison, right? So in this case, uh, of the palladium uh, gold, you generate more linear bonded CO, that means that you, the ratio will be higher, okay? Uh, let's say we did a similar, uh, Requirements on the golden and particles. Okay, we since are different, uh, all different uh, nanoparticles uh, with different composition. Okay, with similar size. Okay, we did the uh, stem uh, use characterization. You can see clearly that uh, there's uh, also the palladium is actually separate on the surface. Right, and if you do scanning, um, the uh, the blue one is basically more or less the palladium, and uh, you can see that. Uh, for the first uh, uh, two or three layers, it's a pure palladium, and the inside is the gold. Okay, so it's a cautious structure, basically. And uh, it was the nanoparticle has a very little palladium, 
even with a little palladium, the surface actually also the palladium reached. Okay, so you can the first this is the top layer. You can see the first two to attend the uh, palladium, and then you have the gold. So that's the surface also have some gold, but very small. And then you have you know, most of the palladium. Okay, and this is the subsurface. Okay, so you have the palladium, and then also very little gold. Okay, inside it should be gold. Okay, so this is basically the uh, colored mapping. You can see that the surface is still majority are uh, a palladium and some position has gold so, uh, item on it. And uh, we can find that the nanoparticles also have a very high CO selectivity and okay, majority of them high, higher than 90%. Okay. And we can also uh, normalize it to the weight to so generate the mass activity, right? And uh, you can see that uh, we compare with the literature. So this work is the, the red one. Okay, so the mass activity is normalized to gold and palladium to total uh, noble metals. Okay, so it's a uh, very high. Okay, and the durability. Okay, so uh, it's very important to test the long-term uh, durability for the uh, sodium reduction in the catalyst because uh, um, in the past we can see that uh, due to the Formation of the carbon on the surface, so, so the so the the long-term durability of the most of the catalysts is very very bad. Okay, so this catalyst is quite good. After twelve hours of testing, you can see that um, the current uh, quantum is stable, and the selectivity of CO is also quite stable. Okay, so we did the similar thing to check the uh, CO binding configuration on different uh, surface. Um, this is on palladium nanoparticle. This is on gold palladium with 60% gold, 40% palladium, and this is 75% gold, 25% uh, palladium, okay, and others. You can see that the, the percentage of the uh, linear or top bound is still actually increased, okay, following this uh, trend, okay, so it uh, actually can be um, explained by the same uh, reasons, okay. We have further did the uh, DFT calculation on the several uh, key intermediates, for example, the COH and this is the hydrogen. We look at uh, this uh, selectivity problem, okay, so for the, the COH, from the different uh, surface, okay, uh, we have different anomalies, okay, and then we can, you can see that uh, this is with pure palladium, the pure pure gold, the yellow is a, uh, the, the gold one is a pure gold, okay, the black one is a pure palladium, right, and uh, this is a reaction in, uh, coordination for the CO2 reduction and this is for the hydrogen evolution. You can see that uh, for gold, it's, uh, the first step is uh, too slow and for palladium, the last step is too slow. This is the removal of the CO and for gold is the absorption of the CO2, okay? So you have to you know, create a kind of balance, right? And you can see clearly for this uh, green one, the gold 94, palladium 6 actually you can see that the first step is kind of an activation energy quite low, and the last step also compared with uh, pure palladium also significantly lowered. Okay, so this is why the gold and palladium uh, anoid is give you a better uh, performance. And the same same time, you can see that uh, this uh, uh, kind of catalyst uh, also have the lower oxygen evolution uh, activity. Okay, so last I'll talk about uh, the um, single item um, catalyst for CO2 reduction. Yeah? And uh, we, we investigate a couple of different uh, single items. So here I only um, uh, emphasize only one, the RM-based single site, uh, single item. Okay, so synthesis of the RM single item is a very, uh, already well known. Okay, so basically we're using the ZIP-8 as a template, okay? And then uh, basically it provides the nitrogen and the carbon and also the uh, and the, the zinc. Um, so also, you know, during the heat treatment, the zinc will be uh, will be gone and then uh, replaced by iron. Okay, so you get this kind of well defined nine particles iron and iron doped uh, single item. Okay, and uh, here is the TM images. Okay, so this is without the iron doping. Okay, so this uh, very well controlled nitrogen doping carbon particles. This is with iron doping. Okay, so it's uh, more porous. Okay, so if you actually look at the 3D image, it's actually a very rough surface. Okay, so it will give you the high surface area and uh, to host the iron. Okay, so this is iron single 
uh, but you can, if you want to see more clearly, so uh, it says a white dot as a single arm um, items, okay? And you can use the news to identify them. So the battery efficiency of for the CO production is actually for the single item very high, okay? If you compare with the nitrogen doped carbon, okay, basically we have nothing, okay? But for the iron doped one, very, very high. So now, you know, what's the real active size? So it should be associated with iron, right? So this is the, with, uh, you know, surface infrared spectroscopy, okay? So this is uh, with CO2 saturated uh, uh, 0.5 model uh, by company the solution. And then this is argon saturated, okay? You can see that uh, there's a band of associated with the carbon uh, dioxide. So during the reduction, you can see there's a consumption. And uh, there's another band that's about uh, 2,000, 2,100. So this is associated with nitrogen carbon. Okay? So it's this band everywhere in this uh, uh, nitrogen carbon uh, material. And you also see this CO desorption. Okay, so this uh, CO desorption is about uh, around 900. Okay, and this is from the surface of water. And the 19, uh, is a 40, about a 400 is in the solution of the by company that company. It. Okay, and another band about uh, 30, 300, 340 is about the COH, so it's similar with, uh, on the copper surface. Okay, and uh, with argon saturated ones, uh, the bands are similar, but the only difference is that uh, you don't see this carbon dioxide because you don't have the carbon dioxide here. Okay, but you still see this uh, uh, carbon dioxide because of uh, from this EH light. Okay, so the reaction in uh, reaction pathways supposedly follow also follow on the metals. Okay, CO, CO2 absorbed on the surface to form COH, and the COH is decomposed to CO, and the CO removes on the surface. We also did the you know the, the testing in the PBS buffer solution, so page seven. So in this case, there's no uh, carbon source. Okay, so the electrolyte don't have the carbon. You can see that. Uh, uh, on the surface, we don't see any of the carbon monoxide single, okay? And for the CO saturated PBS of solution, we do see this uh, CO resorption, okay? So that means uh, the, uh, this band that we found that, uh, in the bicarbonate solution is actually uh, from the soft CO, okay? And if you, you, you can also do on the carbon, uh, on, on the carbon nitrogen uh, material, Okay, so this uh, nitrogen doped carbon without the iron, you don't see any of the band, especially except this uh, uh, carbon nitrogen bond. Okay, so that means the CO is actually absorbed on iron. But the, the problem here is that uh, this CO absorption on iron is very, very strong. Okay, for example, we did this uh, impairment. So first, uh, we absorbed the, the CO okay, at uh, minus 0.3 volt, so it's strongly absorbed on, on the uh, on the catalyst, and then we saturated them. Okay? So the, you can see the single of the CO okay, increase and then stabilize. And then we we purge argon and the jump the voltage from minus 0.3 volt to minus 0.5 volt. So that means the reduction should be, okay? So the um, CO should be reduced to some, should be reduced and then uh, removed on surface. But we didn't see this. Okay, you can see the intensity of the CO still uh, very high. So that means the CO is actually not easy to be removed in this case. Okay, so we did the DFT calculations. First, uh, we using this, we find the, you know, uh, put the CO on this uh, perfect uh, iron nitrogen carbon site, okay, on, on top of the iron. We can see that uh, the, we can predict the wave number of the CO and also the charge energy very, very high. Okay, so we can see that uh, uh, the first step is very easy because the absorption of the CO2 on the iron is very uh, straightforward. And then, but to the uh, last step to remove the CO is very difficult because the absorption of the CO on the iron is too strong. Okay, so this case, we don't think this pathway is uh, feasible. Okay, and how about uh, the items? You know, around this uh, iron, for example, the carbon, for example, the nitrogen. Okay, we also it is a, a calculation. But I found that uh, even though the last step, step is very, very easy okay, to remove the CO, but the first step, so that means the absorption of the 
CO2 and the corresponding the COH is actually very, very weak. Yeah, so it's the red curve and red, black, and yellow curve. So that means it's a, um, not feasible. The last uh, we actually did some uh, testing to see whether these are some the uh, uh, defect carbon matrix. Okay, so that means uh, there's a no, not a perfect carbon rings here, right? So the subsection of the reaction limit for the COH and the CO actually we can also uh, calculate it. So the subsection energy is much lower, okay? Uh, and the wave number we can also predict is very similar to what we observed once. And this, the uh, reaction pathway is the following green ones, okay? So the first step and the last step, the both steps actually the absorption, this energy needed are uh, uh, much lower than the previous cases. So we believe that uh, this, you know, that, that the real active side can be this uh, defective, you know, ion center. The yeah, last, uh, thank uh, the, all the funding support from these uh, different uh, funding agencies and uh, the people who did this work, mainly by Dr. Sanchen Zhu and uh, some other uh, my group of members. Thanks.